So the system of real numbers. So mapapansin nyo yung diagram dito sa board. Ito yung real numbers. Under the real numbers, we have the irrational numbers. Rational numbers. Na, ano, ano nga ba itong irrational numbers? Ito yung mga non-terminating and non-repeating decimals. So that means yung decimal point niya is infinite. Hindi mo siya pwedeng basa ikakat. Ang example niyan ay yung pi. Familiar ko yung kay pi. Maka nadinig niyo na yan. We also have e. Yan. Mayroon din tayong square root of 2. Square root of any non-perfect square numbers. Then, mayroon din tayong tinatawag na rational numbers. Under the rational numbers, we have the fraction, the integer. Under the integer, we have the negative integer. Ito yung mga less than 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. And we have the whole numbers. Under the whole numbers, the zeros, or the zero, and the natural number, are also known as the counting numbers. And 1, 2, 3, up to positive infinity. The natural number, we have 1. The prime numbers and the composite numbers. So, pasin natin sa diagram. Kapag pababa yung way natin, or going down tayo from top to bottom, sometimes yan. Example, some real numbers are whole number. Some rational numbers are fraction. Or, some integer are natural numbers. Kapag paakit naman yung way natin, always naman yun. Gaya ng fraction is always a real number. O kaya, negative integer is always a rational number. So, ganun yung magiging flow ng diagram natin. Oh, our direction is write true if the statement is correct. Otherwise, write F. If you want to make a try, then pause the video, then... If you are done, just play then check your work. Zero is an integer. Number two, square root of 100 is a whole number. Number three, all integers are rational numbers. Number four, the intersection of rational numbers and irrational numbers is the empty set. Number five, ten point 2, 3, 4, 1 is an irrational number. Number 6, 0 is either positive or negative integer. 7, the set of integers is an infinite number. 8, all integers are, let's say, irrational number. And now let's check your answers. Number one, zero is an integer. True or F? The answer is true. Yes, zero is an integer. Number two, the square root of 100 is a whole number. We can simplify the square root of 100 because 100 is a perfect square. And this the square root of 100 is equal to 10. And 10, is it a whole number? Yes, it is. So it is also true. Number 3, all integers are rational numbers. The answer is true. If you remember our tree diagram, so under the, uh, under the rational numbers, we have the integers, whole number, and the counting numbers. Number four, the intersection of rational numbers and irrational numbers is the empty set. Do you have intersection? We don't have intersection. That means it is an empty set. Also true.
Number five. 10.2341 is an irrational number. It is a decimal, but it is terminating decimal. So, this is a rational number. We can write as a fraction. Number six. Zero is neither positive or negative in the year. Yes. Zero is not positive nor negative. Seven, the set of integers is an infinite set. Yeah, we cannot count the negative numbers and the positive numbers. So this is true. And last, all integers are irrational numbers. This is F. Take, take a look at our number three and number eight. So, this is the application of our real numbers. Your next lesson is about our number line. Our number line is composed of the positive numbers and the negative numbers. Where we can find the positive and negative numbers? So, we have the origin. Origin, the value of our origin is zero. In zero, we can, we can locate the origin. On the right side of our zero, those are the positive numbers. So we have the positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four, positive five, and positive six. And so on up to positive infinity. Then on the left side of our origin, or the zero, we have the negative numbers. We have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. Okay, this is our number line. The importance of this number line is we can apply this in the rules in our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We also have the so-called absolute value in this symbol yeah, that one so in this absolute value we're not um, we neglect the value of our or the sign of our integral value let's say we have negative absolute value of negative 3 so we neglect the sign of our numeral which is and that is equal to positive 3. Absolute value of negative 5. That is 5. That means it is the distance from the origin to our given number. In this case, negative 5. So since we are talking about the distance, that's why we get the positive value. Because we don't have negative distance. So that is the absolute value. So if I have negative 8, that is equal to positive 8. Okay? Let us recap. The number, the numbers on the right side of the origin, that is the positive numbers, those are the numbers greater than 0. And on the left side of the origin, those are the numbers that is less than 0. That means... In our left side, um, the farther the number, the lesser the value. So if I have negative 10, that means negative 1 is greater than negative 10. So if I have negative 6 compared to negative 2, negative 2 is greater than negative 6 because uh, the farther our distance from zero on the negative side, the lesser the number. In the same case, if our number is on the right side, the, far, the farther from zero, the number is has a greater value. Let's say 10 is greater than 1. 15 is greater than 6. Okay? Those are the positive numbers and the negative numbers.